Hi, Bob Hot Rod Roar from Cluffy. In an earlier video, we talked about thermostatic radiator valve actuators, like this one right here. Now what I want to demonstrate for you is how you put a thermostatic radiator valve, the body, into a radiator. So what we've got here in front of us is a radiator, and we're going to assemble some of these so I can show you the different configurations of valves that we offer from Cluffy. If you have a Euro-style radiator like this, it's probably going to have a straight thread on it. It's going to have a straight thread on it. So we have a valve that's made just for that application. And what it's going to have that you can notice the difference here from uh, MPT is it's a straight thread, and it's going to have a rubber O-ring seal on it. So what that's going to do, it's not going to need pipe dope or Teflon tape or anything like that to put that in there. And let me just demonstrate how this would go together. So this is um, one of our convertible valves. I'm going to show you how to assemble it, first of all. Sorry about the noise. Get a radiator valve wrench. There's so many uses for this valve, and it makes your installation so much easier so you're not marking up your chrome surfaces on that. But you notice that that wrench has the, um, it's uh, notched out just to fit that little adapter just perfectly. So then this would go in there, and you would just tighten that right in until it seals against that over, uh, rubber O-ring in there. Tighten it up until you can see that little O-ring squish out. And now you can put your, um, your valve body onto that. That also has a little nose o-ring in it, so you get a good seal there. It's not just a tapered seal in there. So let's put this together. Keep in mind the flow direction on this valve, because it's got the same thread on both ends, but the flow is going to go into this radiator in the direction of that arrow there. So let's put that on there. So now you've installed the straight thread. Now we do offer different versions of this valve. If you've got a job that's got the old cast iron style radiators, those are typically be an NPT thread. That's a US thread. We've got two different valves that we could use for that application. We've got a straight through pattern, straight pattern, and we've got an angle pattern of that valve. They're available with either a half inch or three quarter NPT thread, the same union connections on the end here. But now this will need to be Teflon taped or um, sealed in there. There's no rubber O-ring to seal on an N NPT type of valve. So that's a different selection, angle straight. But let's get back to this one and I'm going to show you how you can uh, turn this into a thermostatic radiator valve. So out of the box, we call this a convertible valve. By that I mean it can be used as a manual valve just like that. So if you wanted to put on a radiator and you knew where you were always going to have that, maybe in a shop where it's always going to be set at a certain uh, position, you could just turn to that where you want it and leave it there. But suppose you go along and say, gosh, I wish I would have put some kind of actuator on that so it can monitor the temperature and control a little bit more accurately. Good news, this valve is uh, convertible. That's why it's called a convertible valve and I'll show you how to do that. So what you do is you take a little screwdriver, and there's a little notch in that cap, and you pop that cap off. It's got little fingers. Put that aside. And then you can take the knob off like that. You screw it off. It's a threaded knob. And now you've got this little plastic adapter. So the next thing you have to do is you have to take that adapter. And if you'll notice, it's just snap fit on there. You can see all those little prongs. They snap off easily. So you just take that off, put that aside. And now you'll recognize that. There's our thermostatic radiator valve body like you'll see on uh, other valves that we're going to show you as we go along. So now you want to turn that into an actuator. So we've got a kit for that. There's the actuator that we talked about earlier, and it's going to come with this little adapter ring. So the first thing you're going to want to do is take that adapter ring, and you can see it's got a little hex pattern in it. So now you're going to take that ring, and you're going to slide it over there. This takes a little practice, because you've got to spread it open enough, and it's got a notch in it. And it's going to go right down like that, and it's going to snap into place. And you know you've got it right, because the, the hex is going to line up there again. And now you've turned that into a, a body that you can put the actuator on. So now you've got the right thread in there to do that. Back that off to the highest setting so you can push it on there easier. And now you can just screw that right on there. Like that, and there you go. Now, when you put this type of actuator on a radiator, you don't want to put it up upright like this vertically because now what's going to happen is the heat from the radiator is going to come up, it's going to trap in the head of that and it's not going to give you a very good controllability. So make sure this is always down like that so the airflow can go through it and that sensor can, uh, can see what the ambient room temperature is. Since I'm right here, we talked earlier about one of the features of the Cluffy valve with the um, with the liquid filled cartridges in there is we have a much stiffer spring in our bodies. If you were um, to push on that, you can see that pushes really hard and we can operate that valve because we've got the liquid filled uh, cartridge in our actuator so we can push against that much stiffer spring tension. So that's a nice feature of the valve. So that's one way that you can uh, use a convertible valve on a radiator. Let me take that off and I'm going to show you one other option for this. 
Now this here is what we call a balancing or an isolation valve. And what's different about this valve is there is no ability to change it into an actuator type of valve. If you look inside there, you'll see that valve just has an Allen a screw in it. So two things you could do with that is you could shut it right off if you wanted to take this radiator off the wall, for example. Maybe you want to paint behind it or something like that. This is used as an isolation valve, but it also gives you the ability to be used as a balancing valve. If you want to regulate the flow going through this radiator, you can put this valve in here same union connection, the same uh, straight thread tailpiece for it. So now you've got that put on there, and now you can uh, use that to balance the flow or shut it off. Now this would usually be used in conjunction with the other type of valve. So this would be on the on one side of the uh, radiator, on the other side of the radiator would be the one with the actuator. So now you've got shut off uh, and controllability on both sides on the return and the um, supply to this valve. So that, uh, that's a pretty quick uh, demonstration of how you turn a radiator into a, a valve type of radiator with an actuator on it with the two different choices of valves. Next we're going to go on to the H pattern uh, radiator type valves that goes typically on a panel radiator where you've got the connections already built into the radiator. We've got some very nice valves to do uh, that application also.